Section 10.3, Chi-Square Independence Test. So this test is a little bit different because um, we'll have like these two-way tables. So we'll basically have two variables, um, but let's see what we're looking for. So for the independence test, it's we'll say our HO will be the variables are independent of each other, meaning there is not a significant association between the variables. Any association between the variables is likely due to chance and sampling error. So basically our HO is that there is no effect. If you go back to when we first learned about independence. Otherwise, what we're gonna to try to prove is that there is an effect. So we, this is when we wanna prove like two variables are affecting each other. So the, our H1 will be the opposite. So instead of independent, we'll say dependent. The variables are dependent of each other, meaning there is a significant association between variables and the association between them is no longer due to chance or sampling error. There actually is an effect. So this test is useful when we wanna find an effect between two variables. So it's just kind of different than what we've been doing. We haven't had two variables before in a hypothesis test. So you'll likely see the word effect or the word independent or dependent. So some keywords in this section. So I'm gonna go back to some probability formulas and then that'll lead us to shortcuts. So I'm only using these formulas to derive the shortcut and then you can jump to the shortcut. So you may or may not remember, but back in chapter five, um, we learned that if two events are independent, then the and case probability of A and B would be the same as the probability of A times the probability of B. So we're gonna use this to develop a formula and then we can use the shortcuts after that. So in our first example, um, we have a two-way table that has a random sample of 513 Americans, and we have two variables, their education level and their smoking habits. So that's a big key that's different about this test than the other tests so far. And so that's why we made two-way tables, right? We have Variable one is education, variable two is smoking habits. And so we're curious, does the data provide enough evidence at 5% to show that smoking status is dependent on education level? That's a big hint that we're using chi-square independence test. So when I say smoking is dependent on education level, that means whether you smoke or not has an effect on your education level or your education level, right, has an effect on if you smoke. So there's an effect between the two variables. Um, so our H1 will always be dependent because that's what we want to prove. And HO is the opposite, independent. So smoking status is independent of education, means your education has no effect on if you smoke, or smoking status is dependent on your education level, meaning there is an effect. So probably in this case, it means less educated people are smoking and more educated people are not, right? That's kind of what we've learned about smoking so far, but that may or may not be the case, but right, different education levels are smoking at different rates. That's what we mean by there is an effect. Otherwise, they should all be kind of around the same. So alpha is 0.05. So let's just derive the formula and then we'll try to understand better what's going on. So just like goodness of fit, we need to find expected frequencies. Um, so expected in this case means they're independent because that's our HO. So the expected frequencies are what we expect if they are independent. So that means the and case would be P of A times P of B. So to find expected, it's the same formula. It equals N times P. So again, expected if they are independent. And then we're gonna compare the table to the independent values. So I'm gonna just do one and then we'll do the shortcut after this. So N is sample size. We're gonna do probability of no diploma and smoking. And so if they're independent, it would be probability of no diploma 
times the probability of no smoking, or sorry, smoking. So we're just looking at if they're independent, if, 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 if. So we're gonna go to the table. So N is 513, that's the easy part. Um, probability of no diploma, we go to everyone with no diploma, that's 72 out of 513. And then probability of smoking, we go to everyone who smokes, 107 out of 513. And then this will happen every time one of the ends will cancel out with one of the ends. So we just have 72 times 107 divided by 513. And so you'll notice 72 is my row value. 107 is my column value, and 513 is the total. And so that'll give us a shortcut formula so we don't have to use all this messy stuff again. So the shortcut is E equals R for row times the column divided by the total. So for this case, we will get 72 times 107 divided by 513 and we get 15.02. So this is saying if smoking and education are independent, this sample should have had around 15 people in this category. So I'm gonna go ahead and write that on the table. So 15.02 is the expected. So I'm gonna put the expected in parentheses on the bottom and then the top number is the one given from the sample. So those numbers on top were already from the sample, and so we're comparing our sample to the expected values. So again, if independent, we should get around 15, but our sample had 20. So let's talk about how to calculate the rest. So in green that I'm highlighting, these are all my sample values in each category, and we wanna compare them to what they would be if independent. So if they were independent, um, let's go to don't smoke and no high school. So we're gonna do row times column. So 72 times 406 divided by 513. And we get 56.98, so that's again expected. So let's jump down to um, smoking in high school only. So again, we look at current row. Current row is 221. Current column is 107. And then it's always divided by the total. So we get 46. And then this would round up to 10. 095 would round up to 0.10. Hopefully that makes sense. I'll write it on this side. And then I skip some, just to save some time, I might do this on tests as well. Um, so I did high school only and not smoking. I did some college and smoking. You could check those to get practice. Um, let's jump to some college and not smoking. So my current row is 117. My current column is 406 divided by 513. Ninety two point six zero. So that one's pretty close. So maybe there is no effect, right? Based on this, based on this row for some college, it's pretty close to what's expected. All right, and then let's do bachelor's degree or higher. So we get current row is 103, current column is 107, all over 513. It's tedious, but we're almost there. So 21.48. So that means bachelor's degrees maybe aren't smoking as much as expected. So we should have had 21 smokers in this group, but we only had nine. That's what that's telling me. So maybe there is an effect after all. And so that's why it's important when we find chi-square to consider all the categories, because maybe there's not much effect on the sum college category, 
but other categories have an effect, and that's enough to say there is an effect. So chi-square gets ugly. It's the exact same formula as last time. It's just a little more challenging. Um, and I lined it up to line up with the table. So you'll see this lines up with the table just to make it a little bit easier to follow along. So we're gonna find little chi-squares for each box. And some of them, again, I did for you just to save some time. So I didn't do top left. So the formula is O, which is 20, minus E, which is 15.02. We're gonna square it and divide by 15.02. So same formula, it's just not organized as nicely. And I get a little mini z-score of 1.651. So I did do the next one for you, but just to show you what I'm doing. So top right, we would do 52 minus 56.98 and square it and divide by 56.98. And that's where I got the 0.435. All right, so I'm going to only do the ones I haven't done yet, just, again, to save time in the video, but you can check the other ones. All right, so I did this one already, so I'm going to jump to um, second row, second column. So we're going to go ahead and do 168 minus 174.90 squared and divide by 174.90. So just being organized makes a huge difference here. We get 0.272 for our mini easy score. All right, and then third row, I did them both for you. You can see one, two, one, two. And then fourth row, I did the last one, but I didn't do the first column. So let's do the first column. So last row, first column will be nine minus 21.48 squared divided by 21.48. So this is just the tedious step, the very mathy step, and then we'll start interpreting this in a little bit. And I got 7.2509 rounds up to one, 7.251. And so we, we should have eight mini z-scores because we have eight boxes. We're not including the total rows. So that's how I know how many I should have. And then we'll just add them up just like we did before. So 1.651 plus 0.435 plus 1.033 plus 272, 0.015, 0 0.004, 7.251, and 1.911. And we get a chi-square value of 12.572. So it's definitely tedious, but then after this, I promise it gets better. So there's a lot of work to find that chi-square value, and then after that, it's better. So we're going to do our chi-square curve again. So it's right skewed. Chi-square is always right skewed. Um, degrees of freedom is trickier here because we're going to do categories minus one, but we kind of have like two groups of categories, right? We have four categories and two categories. And so that's what we're gonna do, is we're gonna do rows minus one and then columns minus one. So R is the number of row categories and C is the number of column categories. So chi-square uses categories, not sample size. So our degrees of freedom would be, we have four rows minus one times two columns minus one. So what's that, three times one or three? And then we were looking at 12.572, so that's somewhere to the right, just approximate. And it's always right-tailed, so we'll shade the right side and then go ahead and do chi-square CDF. So the middle step was tricky, um, but now everything should feel very similar. So we're gonna do lower, 12.572, upper 10 to the 99, and then degrees of freedom three. And that's our p-value. So go ahead and type that on your calculator. We're almost done with this example. These ones are long, I know. And 
I get a p-value of 0 0.0057, which is very little risk. Um, if there is an effect, if there is no effect, sorry, it is very unlikely that this would just happen at random. Right, it's way less than our cutoff of 05. So it's very little risk, so we're going to reject HO. We're rejecting that there's no effect. So there is enough evidence, or there is strong evidence at 5%. to show that smoking status is dependent on level of education, meaning there is an effect. Um, I didn't write the steps out because it's really the same as goodness of fit. The only difference is the expected frequencies and degrees of freedom. Otherwise, it's the same. And so if you want to write those down, expected was just row times column over n and degrees of freedom. It's the same idea. It's categories minus 1, but you had to multiply the two types of categories, row minus 1 times column minus 1. So I think the last thing I want to do is we figured out there is an effect, but who is it affecting the most? So effect means that the levels of education don't smoke at the same rate. So... Who is smoking the most and who's smoking the least? So let's check that out. So I'm going to go ahead and copy the table over just so we don't have to keep going back and forth. And what we're going to do is we're just going to look at the smoking rates of each group. All right. So how do we find the smoking rate of each group? So we're going to look at smoking only in each category. So for no high school diploma, what's the chance that you smoke? 20 out of 72. So there's 20 smokers out of 72 high school diplomas. So we're basically looking at the chance of smoking in each category. So it's, uh, sorry. It's probability of smoking given your education level. Um, so high school only, 53 out of 221. Right? Some college would be 25 out of 117. And then the final one is bachelor's or higher, so BS plus, just to abbreviate it, would be 9 out of 103. So if your calculator is ready, why don't we find the percent for each of these? And then we'll get a better understanding of this. So 20 out of 72. Um, I'm going to make these percents, so 27.78%. So if there's no effect on smoking, I should get this number for all of them, or at least close. That's what no effect means. So it means the chance of smoking should be the same for all of them. But we did learn there's an effect, so we're probably going to get different numbers. So hopefully that helps us understand what no effect means. So high school only, we get 23.98%. So that's a little bit different, but is that maybe not different enough? Um, let's check out college, 25 out of 117. It's decreasing as we get more education. So that's giving me a hint that, again, education is affecting smoking status because this percent is going down. And then bachelors or higher is only 9 out of 103, which is significantly less. So again, if there was no effect, if they were independent, those percents should all be about the same. But we just proved they weren't. And then I'll just say close, right? Because again, there's a little bit of sampling error. But they aren't. And so who's most likely to smoke? It looks like no high school diploma is most likely to smoke because it's the largest percent. So this hypothesis test tells me that there is an effect. And the effect seems to be that smoking decreases as education increases. 
So we had to investigate a little bit more after the hypothesis test to make more meaningful conclusions. But the hypothesis tells me that there is an effect, and then you could investigate the data more to figure out what that effect is. So it appears education leads to less smoking. Cool. So I'll see you back for the next video.